A few months ago, I did a video about the Rivian electric pickup truck that allegedly is coming to market. I will put a link in the description in case you want to look at that video. But today, we are talking about the Atlas. A-T-L-I-S. And it's another truck that allegedly is going to be available. But I have no idea if that's true. Like the electric Israeli says, can they build it and can they deliver it? I hope they can. I truly do. Are you the CEO of an automobile manufacturer? Are you the CEO of Ford, Chevy, Dodge? If so, then you better be working on an electric truck. If you have the sense God gave a goose, because it ought to be a race to see who can be the first one because it has the potential to be huge. The truck market is a $116 billion market. In the United States, full-size American pickup trucks are number one, number two, and number three best-selling vehicles in the whole country for the last five years. The top-selling pickup trucks have grown 7.1% in sales year over year for the last five years. 2.4 million full-size trucks were sold in 2018. On a, with an average selling price of $48,377, according to the Detroit Free Press. Let's, talk, let's start by talking about some of the benefits of the Atlas XT EV pickup truck. First, they want to get rid of the side mirrors. and They're not the first company to come up with this ideal. Tesla wants to do it as well. Uh, but there's a big problem, a big roadblock to that. It's called... Washington politics. Washington, D.C., who of course knows what's best for all of us, will not allow vehicles to get rid of the side mirrors. They just will not do it. Uh, it's against the rules. You cannot produce and sell a uh, vehicle in the United States if it does not have physical mirrors. Now, this is a no politics zone, this channel, as much as possible. Sometimes you have to talk about politics, but I try not to. So we won't get into the fact that Washington sticks their nose where it don't belong and needs to just keep out of it because we won't talk about that. So anyway, uh, it's a really cool concept. I think it could be safer than mirrors, but uh, it's just not allowed at the moment. They want a side view mirror for driving assistance, a backup camera with corner peak. I would like to see that. I'm not really sure what that is. Trailer hookup assist camera, fifth wheel and gooseneck hookup assist camera, forward facing camera for parking assist. That'd be really nice. A lot of times I have no idea how close I am to the handicap um, sign before I'm going to hit it. And I would like to have a camera in front of my car. Uh, all this, all this is good. All this makes sense. I love it. If they can just get through, get around Washington, get them to change the law. Okay, let's talk about range, which is very important with electric vehicles. The most important thing about any electric car, in my opinion, is range. They're, going, they're saying that this truck is going to have a 500 mile range. Now, it depends on which battery size you choose, but up to 500 miles. Zero to 60 in five seconds, which is common for pure electric cars. Super fast, super quick. 120 mile per hour top speed and 15 minute charge time. Now they're claiming it's not gonna be, um, you know, 15 minutes to 80% or 50% or whatever, not 15 minutes to 100 miles, 15 minutes to fully charge the battery. That I have to see. I have to see it. They claim they're gonna use something called 4C batteries. The number four, letter C, batteries. I did a Google search and of course, all I found were like four packs of C-size batteries or C batteries. I have no idea what a 4C battery is. But they say they're going to do that. Um, you know, and they're going to have to use their own chargers because the chargers out there in the market aren't going to aren't uh, going to do that. Yeah, you know, these chargers right here. And of course, you know, they don't have Tesla money. They can't just magically overnight put you know, thousands of these all across the nation like Tesla has done. So, man, that 15-minute charge time mean, means nothing to me. If I was going to think about buying this car, this truck, there's no way I would buy it because of a supposed 15-minute charge time. Because I just don't think it's going to happen. 
you know, maybe it's the pessimism in me, but it's more the this company doesn't have much money, you know, and can't do it. If Tesla announced they were going to have 15 minute chargers, uh, then I might would think about you know, that. Yeah, maybe so. Now, of course, you can charge at uh, almost any station that takes the standard plug called 1772, I think. That, uh, that's probably not it, but it's close. You know, the same uh, charging cord that my Volt takes, that the Spark EV took, that almost every v electric vehicle takes besides the Tesla. You, know, you can charge on that, which is your standard rate, but you're not going to fully, you're not going to fill the battery completely up in 15 minutes, of course. Okay, so here we go. What I was talking about, three different battery options, 300, 400, and 500 miles. Of course, as it says in the description, all ranges are based on an unloaded truck with no cargo or trailer weights. Of course, just like uh, when Ford puts out the gas mileage of the F-150, it's uh, an unloaded truck with no cargo or trailer weight. That goes without saying. What about towing capacity? You can tow up to 35,000 pounds up a 6% grade while maintaining 65 miles an hour. Man, so going 65 miles an hour up a 6% grade, towing 35,000 pounds? Good gracious. Now, of course, that's towing a fifth wheel or a gooseneck because if you look at this, the trailer hitch towing capacity uh, is 6,000, 10,000, 14,000, or 17,000 pounds. I guess that depends on which truck you get, which option. I don't know. And then it lists four different weights for the fifth wheel and gooseneck towing capacity, 20, 25, 30, and 35,000 pounds. And hauling 35,000 pounds, it'll still go zero to 60 in 18 seconds. This is where if I was watching the video, I'd pause it and read all of these bullet points. That's up to you. But the key features, standard range 300 pounds, optional range 500 pounds. You know, a lot of this we've already talked about. You have a choice of two different bed sizes, six and a half or eight foot. Um, single speed direct drive or independent air spring suspension, blah, blah, blah. Just all kinds of stuff. Two things in the back of this truck that most trucks will not have. One is an air compressor where you can, uh, if you need to air something up, it's in the bed of your truck. No, no worries. Just, uh, which is kind of nice. That could really come in handy. It's something that very few people would use that often, but it'd be nice to have if you needed it. And another thing that every electric truck manufacturer or uh, everyone who wants to make them says they're going to have Ford's going to have this, Rivian's going to have it, and uh, now the Atlas is uh, uh, electrical outlets in the bed of the truck. Now, this one's going to be a 110 or 220. You'll have both of them. I can't remember what the Rivian has, if it has a, 220, a 120 or a 240. I can't remember if the Rivian is, uh, has a 240 or not. I don't know what Ford is planning on doing with their F-150, but this one will have a 120 outlet and a 240 outlet. That, that could be that could come in really handy. From camping, if you need to, uh, you know, something with electricity to, man, there's all kinds of things I can think of why that would come in handy. Or at least I should be able to think of it, but I can't at the moment. Right now, I can't think of anything you'd use it for. But I guarantee you, uh, there's tons of uh, things that come in handy for, like power tools. Yeah, there we go. Power tools. You can use it for that. But take a look at the truck. It's just a really nice looking vehicle. I love those little headlights in the front, which a lot of companies are going to that. Um, there it is from the back. Uh, just, you know, the tailgate's a little bit plain, but I like it. And there's another picture of the front, those headlights that look really nice. And you can see in this picture, you see those little things sticking out where the mirrors ought to be. The rear, not the rear view mirror, the uh, side mirrors. You see that? That's the camera, which would be illegal to use, but they're hoping, uh, I guess they're hoping to change regulations or something. They're hoping they can use them at some point. But that little nub sticking out is where the cameras would be to see who's behind you or who's in your blind spot or whatever. And there's another picture of the, uh, uh, the side and back and another picture of the front. And look at this. You see this picture? This is not the tailgate. This is the front gate. You know, uh, this is the front of the vehicle, 
and there's a hood in the front, just like the Rivian. But this is nice because it has a tailgate to help you lift heavy things if you wanted to put it in there or just to sit on it. You know, when I was uh, young, in the 80s, we called that a BS bench. So we didn't use the initials. You know, we would seriously... Um, at the lake or just at a parking lot somewhere or wherever we'd put down the tailgate of our trucks and we just sit there and bs there's another picture of it uh, that's actually the front of the vehicle again the fact that they put a tailgate on the front is is very nice i really really like that and there's another one where it shows he uh load up his tools and stuff tools he can plug in uh on the back side if he wants in one of those outlets and here, here you see the interior. Interior pictures, they had very few on their website. But if you look at this, you'll see that uh, just to the right and to the left of the steering wheel are two um, uh, video feeds. That is for your side mirrors. So rather than looking to the right out of your mirror to see if anybody's in the right-hand lanes you can get over, you would just look on this video screen. Man, that's, that's awesome. I'll be so glad. And that is, someday, surely, Washington We'll change the rules, and we'll be able to do this. And that's going to be a common feature, even on cheap vehicles and many years down the road. Expensive vehicles, as soon as they change regulations, within a couple of years. Very nice. I like that. And here's another picture of the interior. Of course, it's got a Tesla-looking screen. That screen looks like it came out of the Model 3. The Model 3 screen is 15-inch. That looks about that size there. And just very nice interior. I like that. Now, if you want one of these and you want, you can be an early adapter. If they have any spots left, I don't know if they do. It says right here, get on, get on our reservation list with no money down. Uh, man, when you do that, you're going to have tons of people who know they're never going to buy one. I guess they're hoping to win the lottery between now and then. So they get on the list. But anyway, the first 5,000 reservations get free charging with their vehicle or 20% off their monthly subscription rate. Uh, what's a monthly subscription rate? Well, this is kind of cool. They've come up with a new way to buy a vehicle. Now, you can buy this truck for $45,000 if you want to. Now, that's not going to be the one 500 mile range, of course. But it starts at $45,000, which is not a bad price. And so, uh, but if you want, you don't have to buy it straight up. You can do what they call the subscription plan. You can be a subscriber like Netflix or something. You can buy it, uh, as you see on the left here, direct purchase. That's just the standard way to buy a vehicle. You write them a check, finance it, whatever you want to do. And it'll come with a 10-year vehicle warranty. Or you see to the right where it talks about subscription, uh, they'll be offering a service where you can replace your vehicle every three, five, or seven years. The subscription model includes the cost of vehicle, vehicle charging, vehicle insurance, as well as regular maintenance, such as the uh, change, uh, tire changes and repairs, one monthly low price. Now, I'm wondering about the insurance. Is it full coverage insurance or just insurance that only covers the vehicle? I don't know. I would not be surprised if the insurance they're talking about, if you read the fine print, and there is no fine print at the moment, but there will be at some point, there will be some fine print. You read it, and it says the vehicle only. You still have to carry liability to cover if you hit somebody. Would be my guess, but I, I, I don't know. And it's kind of strange because for some people, insurance may be $80 a month. For others, it may be 250 because they have a lead foot because they can't slow down. Because they have to drive like a bat out of hell. But uh, I don't know. It would be interesting. But what will the price be? Right here. New vehicle over three, five, or seven years. Maintenance 100% covered. Insurance 100% covered. Uh, unlimited free charging wherever they have chargers at. Wherever that'll be. Starting at five, $700 a month. Now, I had a cousin once that was renting a vehicle. For a few years, he was renting it for $600 a month. And the reason he did that because he drove so much that he didn't want to buy a vehicle and put thousands upon thousands of miles on that car every month. So he just rented one for 600 bucks a month. Now, I'm sure this will have a mileage limit, but if, if it, you know, that's not too far off from what he was doing. Plus, he still had to pay insurance. $700 a month is more than I'd ever want to pay for a car. You know, even if you count $100 a month for insurance, that's 600 Man, my car payment is about a third of that. Seriously. I could never afford that, nor would I want to pay $600 a month. But there are those out there that would consider that a good deal. 
And if you're one of them, jump on it. Be an early, you know, get on the wait list. Time for my final thoughts. What do I think about it? I think $45,000 is a darn good price. Even if you get the low 300 mile range, that's a, that's a really good competitive price. I wonder what it's going to cost with the 500 mile range. Because that'd be, man, that'd be nice. But also, would I ever buy this? No, absolutely not. First off, I don't think it'll ever be made. That's my guess. There's no way I can know for sure. But my guess is if I had to bet a week's pay on it, whether this would ever be made or not, I would definitely put my bet on you will never see this produced and delivered. Uh, but you never know. I could be wrong. I do. But I would not buy it even if in the market for a truck and wanted an electric truck and had the money to spend, just write a check for it, and it was available. They could deliver it next week. I still wouldn't buy it because here's the reason. It's not Ford. It's not Chevy. It's not Dodge. It's not a big name company. What happens if they go bankrupt? If I buy the vehicle or if you buy the vehicle and they go broke six months later out of business, what happens to your warranty? First, if you do the subscription service, would it be taken away from you? I would think so because the vehicle actually belongs to the company, I would think. Who knows? But if you buy it outright, your warranty is gone. You cannot get to, even if you have a warranty on something and it tears up, good luck getting it fixed if the company is bankrupt and out of business. So I wouldn't do it. But if it's made by a big name company, man, I'd buy it. You better believe I'd buy it if I had the money and if I was in the market for a new truck. Absolutely. Do I like this with the Rivian better? Boy, it's a close call. Close call. Uh, this one, because it's cheaper. The Rivian's going to start, I think, $69,000, I think. So definitely this one. But uh, if they were the same pr price, man, I don't know. It's just, it's just too close to call. I like their frunk. I like their, uh, I mean, they both have a frunk. But I like their uh, tailgate on the front a whole lot. But I also like that pass passway that the Rivian has, which you see right here. You can open it up and stick anything long in there. So I think I like the Rivian a little bit better, all in all. But um, let's be nice. Bottom line is, if you want one, I really doubt you'll be able to get it. I don't think you'll be able to, but hopefully I'm wrong, and hopefully you can, and you can drive to my house and tell me I'm full of crap, and I have no idea what I'm talking about, and they didn't make them after all. And I will gladly drive it for you. Absolutely. Bring it up here. I'll drive it. All right. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. And remember, chicks dig scars and electric cars, but they also dig trucks. Of course, everybody digs trucks. But I'm telling you what, you have something like this, and, and you pull up next to a girl at the red light, a young lady, and you're like, what's going on, groovy chick? And she sees you in this truck. Man, yeah, within 30 minutes, you'll be holding her hand. You might even get a little peck on the cheek when you take her home. Because chicks dig trucks, especially electric trucks. Have a great day and thanks for watching.